Welcome back to Between the Sharks. Today, we're gonna to build a cover for our $100 hot tub. This material costs almost as much as the hot tub itself. Two sheets of two inch pink foam, rigid stuff from, you know, that home improvement store that you get stuff from. Let me show you the plan. All right, so we took our wiggly stick of truth we are about six foot five in the middle, both directions, and six foot and change in the corner side to side. So the sides have a little bit of a taper to them. This is four foot by eight foot. We've got two sheets, so basically eight by eight. We are gonna trim this down. I want about an inch or two of overhang, so when the rainwater runs over and drips under the edge, it doesn't kind of like wick its way under into this thing. That's about as fancy as I think we're gonna need to get for now. Most hot tubs have a folding portion of the top, and I was thinking about that. I didn't really know if I needed it, but it might be nice to check the chemistry and temperature without having to hold the top up or whatever. Um, and by the nature of this, we have to seam it anyway. So making a folding seam maybe is the way to go. So let's take a look and... All right, so we've got the foam laid out on top of the hot tub, mostly because if I lay it on the ground, my little helper dog will crawl all over it. She claims anything on the ground is hers. It's part of Dog Island if it's a new surface. Like I said, we were about six foot five this way at the widest point. And this foam has breaks every 16 inches to help a fella with snapping it for insulation purposes between studs. So conveniently, I'll just show you to demonstrate, but we can do with math and add it all up. Wiggly Stick of Truth tells me that this is six foot eight, which is giving an inch and a half overhang on either side, I split it right here, which is gonna work quite well for me. So let's do that. So because the razor knife isn't gonna really do anything beyond the original score, we're gonna go full home improvement and throw way too much at it. Um, this is the blade that was on there, whatever. I should be able to follow this line and it will leave a pretty clean cut. So let's just get her done. Overkill? Absolutely. Did it work? Yep. So, I've done a pretty remarkable amount of work with foam and power tools. So, a little heads up. One of the things that the spinning DC motors seem to do, and AC actually, uh, spinning motors, one way or the other, seem to increase the static effect on foam. So, you don't want to brush all this crap off because if it comes loose and ends up in the water, it's just going to be a pain. To get out it will float out the top but you're gonna have trouble sucking it through the filters is what i'm trying to say so all right gang this piece is still eight feet we've uh cut it this away is all that we needed to because i want to make this square we're gonna take this down from eight feet to 16 inches to six foot eight or 80 inches um because we've only got to take 16 inches off one of the tricks is to go ahead and put your tape measure at that measurement 16 inches which we're going to do we'll just use the what to do to make a line like magic so uh, i'm going to cut on this side of the line that should be close enough uh, i moved this operation out here to keep the little foamy bits as far away from the hot tub as possible Again, any tool will do. You can do this with razor blades if you need to. You can do it with a uh, saw, saw, jigsaw, circ saw. Just know that this stuff uh, really dulls blades faster than anything else you can imagine. So don't use anything fancy on it.
relatively clean cut. Uh, if we feel inclined, we can sand this a little bit. That'll get it smooth. Not sure about the final prep, like not sure about the final finish of this yet. If I'm gonna curve the edges for the rain to, you know, whatever. But let's just get her to the right shape and size first, and then we'll worry about that. Um, I'm gonna drag the four foot sheet over, do the same thing, and then we'll see you in a minute. All right, gang. So we've just got to make this one big piece now. Hey, look at acorn. Gee whiz. Okay. Uh, the way we're gonna do that today is gorilla glue because I'm short on spray adhesive. Uh, that's one other way to do it. Typically. I would glue this seam as well and maybe put some skewers kind of thing in there to hold it all together because I don't really have a workbench that I can get Gorilla Glue all over. I'm going to do it differently today, but if you have that luxury, then great. Um, a few words about Gorilla Glue. It is pretty good stuff. It will not eat this foam. Okay. Uh, it is water activated. so. We will spray the surface down with water a little bit to get it to activate a little faster, but bear in mind, it is also, it expands. So it will lift, it will, it will separate objects or it will lift things, whatever. So we're gonna have to put some weight on it and we are going to, got it. Uh, I don't know where I was. Anyway, we're just, we're gonna do glue. So I'm only gonna put glue on this one side because that's all we need. See if this bottle is even open. Screw in there. Have one of these. All right, now we're. So it doesn't take a thick coat, but you want you want glue pretty much everywhere. This is the most important one because it's holding the seam actually together. The other one will help, but I'm much more interested in the glueitude of this guy. So I may use all my glue on this side, which is unfortunate, but other. Gonna line up our factory edge here. Perfect. Great. This is already setting up a little bit, which is interesting. This is just water. Unnecessary, but it does help speed up the cure time. I'm all in favor of. All right, so now I'm gonna take it, spin it. So my factory edge is against the original mark. I'm gonna line up far corner, near corner. Kind of give it a little bit of that business. All right, now I'm gonna get a block of wood put some weight on it and then uh, clean this off my hands really quick and we just gotta let it settle in. All right, there we have it. We gotta let this dry. Might see if I have enough glue to put these other two pieces on. It certainly does not look like I do, but um, at the very least, this will help us keep the rain out. And then we will have to go buy more glue. Morning gang, we're back. Uh, so we got some rain last night. It's still sitting on top of this. We're not really gonna worry about that. We're gonna hope the underside is still dry and then we can continue our project. We can do a whole video on adhesives at some point and what bonds what thing to what other thing. 
for today, the 77 is going to do all right. Our Spray 90 eats pink foam, and that's what we have on hand. So, not only do I not want to run out, because I don't, uh, there's also a bit of a supply shortage for this stuff right now. So, let's, uh, let's get after it. I have this piece of plastic centered on our overall cover, basically equal overhangs on all sides. And then I have this fancy block of wood waiting down the center so that we can glue one side and then the other without pulling it. So let's take a look-see, pull back the curtain. All right, unfortunately we do have a little bit of moisture on this side. So before I hit the spray adhesive, I'm gonna go grab a shop rag and clean this out. That's gonna be a problem. It's gonna be great, perfect. All right, so I've wiped it off relatively dry stuff free we are working under an oak tree during the fall on a breezy day these are not ideal working conditions but given the options this spray adhesive kind of gets everywhere so out in the opens kind of good uh, we're gonna work from the center out this is folded back on itself we gotta hit both sides so here we go We're gonna do it in sections, as you can see. Our piece of wood. I'm already screwed this up. See if it'll be forgiving. Not ideal, but we'll be we'll be all right. Much more wrinkly than I wanted it to be, but that's just how it's gonna be. You can fight some of these wrinkles out, but really having two people to pull it tight and then one person to push down in the center and work your way out is the way to do it. Uh, all I've proven here is this is too large for me to do well on my own, but that's not gonna stop me from doing it because real realistically, we're just uh, gluing some underlayment to some pink foam. All right, so we're gonna call that the end of our hot tub cover. We are in fact covered and we are waterproofed and we are insulated. We're about 75 bucks deep in this and that's all in the foam. Two inch foam, I believe is what I bought. Thickest they had in the store, 34 bucks a sheet, something like that. I had the spray adhesive in house, 15 bucks a can if you don't. Had the black plastic underlayment in house. Find yourself a some kind of thick tarp or something like that. You'll find them in the home improvement paint section or underlayment section. Anyway, so we're about 75 bucks deep. I think it'll keep rain out and keep heat in for now. We'll test it out, see how it works. And if it's not great, then we'll do an improvement, you know? Prototype, guys, prototype.
So that's going to do it for this. Uh, stay tuned for the next episode where we investigate our heating kind of situation, element, concoction, razzmatazz gadgetry. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.